मोदी जी आई एम सॉरी टू से बट यू आर कम्प्लीटली रॉन्ग अबाउट आर सेमी कंडक्टर हिस्ट्री वॉट यू सेड वॉज हमारे देश में पचास साठ साल पहले सेमी कंडक्टर को लेकर के वो विचार वो फाइलें अटक गई लटक गई अटक गई But in reality, India not just tried once 50, 60 years ago, but tried seven times to set up semiconductor industry in India. With the latest tries being in 2005 and in 2012. But each time, India failed. Not because of some files that got stuck, but there were many other reasons. So in this video, let's break down India's semiconductor history to find out the real reason. why india failed to set up a semiconductor industry and now that india is again trying to make their own semiconductor chips how can we make sure that the past mistakes are not repeated and this time india will succeed at becoming a semiconductor superpower okay so it's the 1960s and india is busy fighting war with pakistan and china but at the very same time on the other side of the world there is an american company Fairchild Semiconductors who wants to expand globally and they have decided to place their factories in India. Now this is a great news for India. If this happens then India will get its first semiconductor factory. So everything is all set and the only thing pending is to get permission from the government of India. But unfortunately the permissions never came. Tired of this bureaucratic procedures, Fairchild Semiconductors started looking elsewhere. And while the Indian government's permission was still awaited, Malaysian government welcomed them with open arms. But don't worry. India's opportunity is not completely lost. Just after a few more years, India's own public sector arm, Bharat Electronics, decided to set up its own semiconductor factory. On paper, it looked like a great idea. Bharat Electronics was already a government-owned company, so approvals were not a problem. The company quickly started the production and rolled out its first batch of semiconductor chips. But there was one thing that bharat electronics didn't have at that time subject matter expertise since they had never produced semiconductor chips the quality was not at par with the global players as a result there was no demand for the indian made chips and bharat electronics had to eventually shut down its semiconductor division for the next 20 years it felt like india lost its semiconductor dream but when the 1980s came it brought a new hope to india not only did india win the cricket world cup but also managed to revive its semiconductor dream and this time bharat electronics didn't go alone it joined hands with indian institute of science to start a new company the isc professors provided the required expertise and bharat electronics provided the required infrastructure Now only one thing remained electricity lots and lots of electricity and that too at a subsidized rate and while the government did promise to provide this electricity but they never actually did as a result the division had to be closed and india's semiconductor dream was shattered into pieces but we indians don't give up that easily right so in 1984 the government started a new company called semiconductor complex limited or SCL for short and this company was solely focused on making semiconductor chips they successfully made 5000 nanometer chips in the first year of operations itself this was a huge achievement for india as international companies like tsmc had not even started yet and scl went from making 5000 nanometer chips to 800 nanometer chips in just a few years everything was going great and scl was close to achieving its dream but then in 1989 the entire complex caught on fire but how did the fire start mm, no one exactly knows but no matter what the reason you would think scl would rebuild its factories in a few months or maybe one or two years right but no there was a huge delay from the government in allocating the required funds thus it took 9 whole years to restart the operations in scl now 9 years is a very long time during this period the competition went far ahead of scl and finally when the scl factories were rebuilt the only contract that scl got was from isro and that too of a very small quantity and india's semiconductor dream 
was lost once again. Now it's the 1990s and India had opened up its economy and Bharat Heavy Electronics decided to take advantage of this situation. They not only decided to make their own silicon chips but also learned from the past mistakes and decided to bring in the right talent. So did India succeed this time? Well, again there was a small problem. You see the silicon chips work at a very small nanometer level and even a small vibration can destroy the whole batch. And guess what, the factory was located next to a railway track and entire day the trains would run on this track creating vibrations and destroying the entire batch. So for the first few months, pale engineers started working at night but continuous night shifts failed to attract the right talent. Moreover, there was no support from the parent company to move the factory to a different location. So once again, India had a failed semiconductor project. Now it's 2005, the world saw YouTube for the very first time. And during the same time, India got one more opportunity. A multinational company decided to start its operations in Hyderabad. They also brought in the right experts and equipments. But when these equipments actually reached Indian ports, they could not get the right approvals. Many months passed by, but still the equipments could not touch Indian soil. So the company decided to scrap the project and shift the factory to China. The slow government processes not only made India lose a good semiconductor facility, but also gave away more than 4,000 good jobs to China. And this resulted into a domino effect because other companies who were also in the process of setting up their factories in India suddenly started backing out. But in 2012, something changed. For the very first time, the government started taking interest in setting up the semiconductor industry. And they allocated 39,000 crore to make India a semiconductor hub. Even the Gujarat government allocated 300 acres of land in Gandhinagar to set up this project. And because of these initiatives, companies like IBM started taking interest. But when they were about to set up their factory, this time the investors started backing out. They reminded IBM of the past experiences that India had with semiconductor companies and forced IBM to withdraw. So once again, India's past experiences became a roadblock for India's semiconductor dream. But something changed after 2020. India faced a lot of problems due to shortage of chips. And this made government push the Made in India initiative harder than ever. The government started offering huge financial support and subsidies. As a result, big players like Tata came forward and decided to invest 91,000 crore rupees to build India's semiconductor dream. And not only Tata, but five more companies came forward and started building their own semiconductor factories in India. And by 2025, this number has grown to 10 factories. So does this mean India is the next big semiconductor hub? And now all our computers and mobile chips will be manufactured in India? Well, not yet. You see, big players like TSMC and Samsung are making 3 nanometer chips, which are used in your smartphones. But the Indian semiconductor fabs will be making 28, 40 and 90 nanometer chips. So if India is making this big 90 nanometer chips and your smartphone needs a small 3 nanometer chip, then who will buy this big 90 nanometer chips? So does this mean India's semiconductor dream is completely lost? Actually, that's not the case. You see, your smartphone is not the only device that requires a silicon chip. Your TV, washing machine, microwave all need 90 nanometer chips. You see, smartphones are not the only device that need semiconductor chips. Your washing machine, microwave all need 90 nanometer chips. Similarly, digital camera and Wi-Fi require a 40 nanometer chip. And smart devices like cars infotainment and gaming consoles like PlayStation and Xbox require 28 nanometers. So you see, all is not lost. India can start making these chips, build the required expertise and slowly catch up with the world. And by 2035, we can hope that India will become a dominant player in this semiconductor race. So guys, that's it from my side. If you learned something new, then do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.